I was reading a blog recently from a woman called Jennifer Taylor. It went like this. I have a confession to make. I'm tired of going to church. After 34 years of weekly attendance, I'm bored. Bored with long sermons and the two up-tempo, one-slow-song liturgy of our mega-church worship. I'm bored with gymnatoriums and rambling communion meditations and the tasteless cardboard bread pellets that follow. I'm bored with announcement times for ladies' luncheons and small groups and choir sign-ups. I'm bored with the same cliched phrases in the same spoken prayers offered at the same routine times. I'm bored. I know all the reasons to attend church services, but honestly, most Sunday afternoons at noon, I think about other ways I could have spent the morning. Reading the New York Times with a pot of coffee or hiking through the woods or enjoying restorative sleep or putzing around my kitchen trying a new recipe. These all seem more fun, productive and restful than spending an hour at church. It's not about being entertained. As Brett McCracken wrote in his Great Wall Street Journal article last week, 70% of adults between 18 to 22 aren't leaving church because it's not cool enough. Brett wrote, As a 20-something, I can say with confidence that when it comes to church, we don't want cool as much as we want real. If we are interested in Christianity in any serious way, it is not because it is easy or trendy or popular. It's because Jesus himself is appealing and what he says rings true. So I'm not looking for a slicker sermon series or faux-hawked worship leader or designer coffee in the back lobby. And I'm not rejecting the church universal or leaving the faith. I'm not even having a crisis of faith. I'm just bored. Because I believe you have to make a commitment to one local church and invest in community with those believers long term, I'm not going to start shopping for a new church. Besides, all those churches would also have the long sermons and rambling prayers and worship leaders in skinny jeans. That's the problem. I also believe the writer of Hebrews was wise when he cautioned, Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another. I just don't find weekly church attendance that encouraging anymore. In addition to its predictability, I have plenty of friends who also attend church each weekend and then get drunk, live with their boyfriends or swear the air blue. In the South, church attendance is traditional, it is a habit, and one that doesn't in itself produce life change. So I'm sincerely unsure of the solution. Church with its two songs, greeting, awkward handshakes, one song, communion, offering, sermon, two songs, dismissal, is how our culture does Christianity, and I'm ready for something else. What she is describing here is church fatigue, a boredom with the status quo, a restlessness with the predictability, the traditions, the liturgical routines, the lack of righteousness and real change in those who attend services, the way the church is overly concerned with image rather than authenticity. She is describing a craving for something more dynamic, more real and more effective. We can try to dismiss her as a whiny victim of consumerist culture and we can whip out the old line about no church being perfect and tell her to plow on regardless. But the truth is she is representing the voice of a growing minority. There's a growing feeling that something is missing from our church experience. The church as a whole is getting restless. The problem is that even though many are restless, they just don't know what else they can do. A pastor replied to Jennifer Taylor's blog saying, Jennifer, I know and feel exactly what you're talking about. Here's the usual disclaimer. I'm not a 30-something. I'm a 50-something. Now here's the unusual disclaimer. I'm the senior minister, preacher, worship minister for our congregation. I'm the guy who's in charge of making it all happen each week. And much of the time, I myself am bored senseless with what we do. I have a master's degree in worship ministry from a program full of very hip California types who are all about engaging worship and such, and yet I experienced the same boredom in so many places where I visited from coast to coast. Every week is a struggle to make things more interesting, more engaging, more fulfilling, but just about each week I fall into the same formula, the same songs, the same lineup and order, and blah blah blah. Some weeks it works, some weeks it doesn't. The way that we do church has been set in stone for so long now that if church doesn't mean an 11am service by the usual formula, we don't know what it does mean. 
If we don't follow the age-old template, we wouldn't know what else we're supposed to do. We wouldn't know what it was supposed to look like. And so, pastors like this one, working within the strict confines of this template, believing the template to be sacred and immovable, or at least not being able to visualize any alternative, simply try to move things around a bit. They change running orders, they jazz things up with more multimedia, or introduce some new songs into the worship time. Since they can't change the template, they simply try to fight with it to get it to work so that it becomes more engaging and more fulfilling. Yet the church remains restless and many are leaving. Jennifer Taylor quoted Brent McCracken in her blog as saying that 70% of young adults between 18 to 22 are turning their back on church. I haven't been able to verify those shocking figures, but all independent research seems to support the theory that the Western institutional church is in decline. Olson says that less than 20% of Americans now regularly attend church services. Olson also predicts that if current trends continue, church attendance in 2050 will be half of what it was in 1990. Prominent researcher Tom Rayner suggests that only 6% of institutional churches in the United States are growing at a faster rate than their community's population growth. In other words, the formal church as a whole is losing ground in the West. People are simply walking away from it. When the church is hemorrhaging attendees and those that remain are restless, we can only conclude that something has gone terribly wrong. But does that mean that all hope is lost? Is the church destined to continue falling irreversibly into decline? These surface statistics would suggest so, but I personally do think there is cause for great hope in all of this. In fact, I believe the Holy Spirit is at work. You see, boredom with the status quo is causing the restless church to examine itself in ways we possibly haven't seen since the Reformation, and this is a good thing. It's causing us to question the old formulas and the traditional templates. We're beginning to ask, what if church doesn't have to be 11am Sunday morning, two songs greeting, awkward handshakes, one song communion, offering sermons, two songs dismissal? What if that formula is not sacred after all? The restlessness is causing us to look to the Bible for answers. Neil Cole said, Many people are longing for a greater cause. They are no longer content with church as usual. They read of the church in the New Testament and their curiosity is piqued. The New Testament accounts are far removed from their experience every week. They hear contemporary stories of the church expanding rapidly in parts of China and India and their hearts soar. Thirst is uncomfortable, but it's the discomfort that causes us to go looking for water. Hunger is uncomfortable, but it's the discomfort that causes us to go looking for food. Restlessness with church is uncomfortable, but it's the discomfort that is causing us to go looking for New Testament Christianity. People are starting to come to the Bible with new questions. They're starting to ask why our church experience is so far removed from that of the New Testament. We realize that there's something very different happening in the book of Acts to anything we've ever known or seen with our own eyes, and it's starting to bother us. Something which seems so thrilling, real, authentic and powerful in the pages of the Bible seems to have been rendered so dull, fake, hypocritical and weak by our contemporary formulas. It's the restlessness that is actually driving the change. You see, all of those negative statistics about the decline of the institutional church are hiding something important. Many people who are walking away are not doing so as backsliders or because of a crisis of faith. Quite the opposite. They're walking away because they're looking for something more meaningful, something more authentic. They're looking for more of Jesus, not less. Not finding him in stale, routine services, they've simply gone looking for him outside of the four walls of the institutional church. Ed Stetzer, director of the Center for Missional Research at the North American Mission Board, has discovered that a growing number of people are finding Christian discipleship and community in places other than their local church buildings. His study found that an astonishing 24.5% of such Americans now say their primary form of spiritual nourishment is meeting with a small group of 20 or less people every week. Stetzer says, about 6 million people meet weekly with a small group and never or rarely go to church services. There is a significant movement happening. Prior to the release of this series, I questioned Fuel Project subscribers through the Facebook page about how often they attend formal church services, and without prompting, many of them confirmed that they felt they had to leave church services to find Jesus. 
They now meet informally in small groups and have no desire to go back to the old routine. I talked with others and was surprised at how often this sentiment arose. Not only is the template not working for us, it's not working for the world either. People look at church now with extreme cynicism and suspicion. Relevant magazine polled a range of non-Christians between the ages of 16 to 29 and discovered that between 70 to 91% of them thought the church could primarily be defined as judgmental, hypocritical, old-fashioned, too political, out of touch with reality and insensitive to others. These were the traits they most associated with Christianity. What went wrong? How did a church with a message so compelling that it changed the world get so off track? This series is designed to answer that question, and it's designed to do it in a very specific way. First, we're going to spend some time deconstructing the image of church we currently have. Then we're going to spend some time reconstructing it according to the New Testament example. In other words, we need to dismantle what is before we can rebuild what should be. At the end of all this, we're looking for a return to the Christian faith we see demonstrated in the New Testament. Please note, as we go through the deconstruction process, we're going to be making a lot of generalizations. Generalizations are just that, they're general. That is, they're not specific to every congregation in every community around the world. If something in the series ahead doesn't apply to your particular congregation, then ignore it and move on to the next thing. The most important thing, what we're aiming for above all else, is to create a clean slate in our minds, devoid of all the old myths and man-made traditions that currently plague us, so that we are unhindered from building a fresh image of church in our minds, an image purely inspired by the Word of God. I believe the Holy Spirit is already driving this change and my hope is that this series will clarify why it has to happen.